Today's lesson is called Topic Writing. How to make an outline. Hi everyone, my name is Jeff. And I'm Hanny. Today, folks, we're going to be talking about maps. Now, I'm not kidding, okay? Today we're talking about making an outline. Now, what do maps have to do with outlines? Well, if you have a map, okay, you can know where you are, and you can also know where you need to go. Now, the most importantly, though, a map will tell you how to get somewhere. Now, when it comes to writing, I know it sounds silly, but an outline is a whole lot like a map. Okay, you set things up before you start writing, and you figure out what you need to say, how you can say that, and you put everything in order so that when you are done, everything makes sense, and you've covered all of your bases. So, a map. It's probably not going to help you when you are writing, but an outline is very much like a map, and boy, can an outline come in handy when you are writing. Okay, our this month's theme is about writing a plan. Writing a plan is like Jeff said. When you have a map, you know where to go. Your goal is where to go. Your destination 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 is where to go. 杂乱无章的内容，如果可以先拟定大纲，你的文章看起来就会比较有条理，而且读起来会比较流畅。Okay, let's get started. Remember, we are making an outline. Hanny and I are helping you guys make an outline. That's why our lesson is called "How to Make an Outline." I hope that's clear. Anyways, folks, today we're going to be writing about getting a pet. Yes, today. We're gonna write something called "Things to Think About Before Getting a Pet." Anyways, let's go ahead and start thinking about what our outline is gonna look like. Okay, and that's gonna let us kind of figure out what our piece of writing is gonna look like in the end as well. 好，现在我们来学习拟定大纲的写作步骤。第一部分呢，我们就要练习用 things to think about before getting a pet， 养宠物前需要思考的事，以这个来当题目来试着拟定文章的大纲。那我们一篇文章呢，主要会分成三个部分，包含开头、正文。总结。那你在拟定大纲的时候，你的开头就可以写引言，还有写出，例如说，像我们今天是以养宠物为主题，就可以写出养宠物的好处、益处。那么正文的部分，你就要开始列出你的一些想法。那我们最后还要再记得做总结。那我们现在就先从第一段开头来练习写写看。First thing you've got to ask: Yes, are you thinking about getting a pet? Okay, that's a really good way of starting your piece of writing or your Outline. Now, I might have let the cat out of the bag there a little bit, but sentence number one, you could ask a question. Hmm, things to think about before getting a pet. Well, first of all, are you thinking about? 好，我们第一段开头这边课文的范例啊，他刻意用一个问句来当开场白。他说 ，Are you thinking about? 空格，那他是要表达说你在考虑养宠物吗？好，那像这样的句子，它其实可以引起读者的兴趣，他会想看，嗯，我觉得我还蛮想养宠物的。好，那接着呢，这句他又可以点出我们文章的主旨。那么这边的部分呢，你要记得 about 是介系词，我们后面要表达养宠物，你要记得把动词加上 i n g。Okay, coming up next. First of all, are you thinking about getting a pet? Okay, that's the question. Now we've got to talk about why a person would ever get a pet. Now it's been a long time since I had a pet, and it sounds like it's been quite a long time for Hanny as well. But you know what? Even I, as old as I am, can think back about the good times when I did have that pet. Why was it great to have a pet? Why would I think of getting a pet again? Well, let's think about some of the good things about pets. You could say something like. 
They are a great source of companionship and blank. Now, guys, remember in this blank, here's a hint. Think of puppies. Why would you want to have a puppy? Besides the fact that puppies are super cute. 好，接下来呢，我们就要练习列举出一些养宠物的好处。那同学们，你可以尽可能把你想到的所有的好处都把它列出来。那这边课文的范例，他是说狗狗啊，或是猫啊，这些宠物们，他们是很棒的同伴。Companionship 就是指陪伴，而且好，这边空格我们是要写说和他们一起玩很有趣。好，那除了这个好处呢，你还可以想别的。例如，我就觉得养宠物看着他们活动，就好像很疗愈一样。好，那我们先来填这个空格，待会再继续列别的好处。Hmm, they are a great source of companionship and lots of fun to play with. Yeah, guys, puppies are great. Playing with puppies is super, super fun. And I heard you mention cats and kittens as well. I've never been a cat or a kitten person. Some people think that cats are great, and that playing with cats is great. I don't feel that way, but hey. Pets, one way or another, are fun to play with. You can have lots of fun with a pet. Now, I am getting older, though. As a kid, I loved playing with puppies, running around and tackling one another and stuff like that. But I'm getting older. Hmm. So, what can a pet do for an old person like me? A person with a bad heart and high cholesterol, failing eyesight, all sorts of bad stuff. What can a pet do for an old fogey like me? Well, that's what we'll deal with in the next sentence. Some experts have even pointed out that. All right, there's a blank for you guys, and this blank will cover everyone, not just really super old people like myself. 好 ，Jeff 老师说，像他这样又老，然后心脏又不好，又高胆固醇，这种人怎么办？当然是要养宠物啦。好 ，Jeff 老师没有那么老。不管怎么样，我们来看这边这个句子。他说，有些专家甚至指出，空格是要说，轻轻抚摸你的狗或猫，可以帮助你纾解压力和降低血压。那要写这个句子的话，我们可以把 pet。宠物当成动词来用，就可以表达轻轻抚摸。那么血压是 blood pressure， 要表达降低血压，它常常搭配的动词是 lower。好，再来纾解压力的话，我们课文之后还会再讲解到这个动词 relief， 它有纾解、缓解的意思。那么 stress 表示压力。那我们来试着写写看这个句子。Some experts have even pointed out that petting your dog or cat can help relieve stress. And lower your blood pressure, which sounds great for me. Anyways, that's it for our intro. Okay, that part of our lesson is now in the books.、So、we've talked about how great pets are and what the benefits of keeping pets are. Let's go ahead and move on to the body of our piece of writing. Okay, if you're going to have a pet, you've got to know what's going to be required. Of you, okay. You have to know the things that you need to do to keep that pet, and also, you're going to need to know that there might be drawbacks to having a pet. Let's say, so you have to be ready for some things that you might run into or encounter when you have a pet. Anyways, let's go ahead and I don't know. Why don't we let you guys fill in this next blank? It's just a blank canvas for you guys. Go for it. 好，接着来到我们的第二段。那同学们不要像是流水账，你就开始写说哦，我以前养了什么宠物，怎么样又怎么样。要记得我们的文章主题是养宠物之前需要思考的事，所以在第二段，也就是我们的正文是要切入主题咯。你就要来说明说养宠物需要的条件，可能遇到的状况。那你甚至还可以用养狗养猫的。这个例子来分别说明说，呃，养狗会碰到什么状况啊？养猫可能遇到什么状况？那我们第四个空格就是要写说，宠物不只需要你的爱，还需要许多时间与精力。当然，在养宠物的时候，主人陪伴、关爱都是必要的，你必须花很多时间精力在它身上。那我们可以用动词 require 来表达出宠物一定要有什么。那这个句子你可以写作。Pets require not only 什么什么 ，but also 什么什么。这个 not only but also 就可以表达不只是什么，还怎么样。Yes, you could say pets require not only your love, but also lots of time and energy. Pets require your love, but that's not all. 
you also have to put a lot of time and effort into your pet so that pet stays healthy and fun, so on, so forth. You have pets. They can get angry with you from time to time if you don't do the right stuff. In fact, I had a cat in college who used to hide around walls and wait for me to walk by and then pounce on me. That cat never liked me. I never did anything right. Anyways, that's cats for now. We'll come back to cats. Let's talk about dogs, okay? Dogs need your love, but there's something else that you are going to need to do with a dog many times a day. That dog is going to need exercise. So in the case of a pet dog, what are you going to do? 好，下一句他前面说，以宠物狗来说，怎么样怎么样？那么空格是要填入你一天就必须带它散步好几次。好，要表达带动物去散步，你就直接用 walk， 再加上你要带去散步的动物。假设你说 she walks her dog three times a day， 就表示她一天带狗狗去散步三次。那要表达很多次，你除了用 many times， 还可以用 multiple times。Okay, so in the case of a pet dog, you have to walk it multiple times a day, many times a day. Now, cats, on the other hand, sometimes cats are really easy to deal with, but they also have those terrible claws. In college, I had a pet cat. Like I said before, the pet cat just destroyed, totally shredded all of my furniture. My couch was never the same after my cat. Arrived, so cats may be less troublesome than dogs to take care of, blank, but they can do something bad. They love doing bad stuff, and they can destroy your furniture with their sharp claws. Anyways, folks, it's time for you to fill in another blank. 好，下一句我们课文提到说，猫照顾起来或许没有狗麻烦。那这边的 troublesome， 它就是用来形容麻烦的、令人烦恼的。那么空格是要填入说，但他们喜欢抓东西。然后接着他又说，而且可能会用利爪来毁了你的家具。好，那我们要翻译这个部分，但他们喜欢抓东西，要特别注意抓这个动词，你不能用 grab。grab 就是像你去抓一罐饮料那种抓，表示抓取、抓住。我们应该用 scratch。scratch 它可以用。来表达指甲或是爪子去抓，像你要表达抓痒也是用 scratch 来表达。好，那我们接着来填入这个句子。Cats may be less troublesome than dogs to take care of, but they love to scratch things and can destroy your furniture with their sharp claws. So there you go, folks. If you like cats, cats may be less troublesome than dogs, but if you want the least troublesome pet. Go with a goldfish. Boy, is that an easy pet to take care of. Anyways, though, all jokes aside, sometimes pets get sick. Okay, and you are going to have to do something when your pet gets sick. After all, that pet is your responsibility. Anyways, when your pet gets sick, what are you going to do? There's another blank for you guys. 好，下一句我们要写说，你的宠物生病的时候，空格要填入，还要随时带它去看兽医，照顾它。那我们这边顺便补充一下，兽医的英文是 veterinarian。V E T E R I N A R I A N， 它也可以常常简称为 V E T， 念作 vet。好，那接着请 Jeff 老师帮我们念这个句子。When your pet gets sick, be ready to bring it to the vet. And take care of it, just like you'd take a child to the doctor. You might have to take your pet to the pet doctor, the vet or the veterinarian, as Hanny was talking about earlier. Anyways, folks, let's go ahead and wrap things up. Okay, in the third part of our lesson here. Okay, we are going to be summing things up and reaching a conclusion. Okay, basically. In our piece of writing, you're going to be looking deep inside of yourself, into your soul, to see if a pet is right for you. If you're the type of person who can take care of a pet, that's what we're doing here. Anyways, blank everyone. The next sentence could say, "Then having a pet could be the best decision you've ever made." And folks, once we finish this sentence, that's it. 
。好，我们进入第三段，那就是要做总结喽。那这个部分你可以写出说评估自己的条件是否适合养宠物。那他这边句子第一个空格就说到，如果你负责任、有爱心和耐心。那么后一句说，那么养宠物可能会是你这辈子做过最棒的决定。好，那么这边帮同学补充三个形容词 ：responsible， 它是形容负责任的；那么你可以用 caring 来表达有爱心的或是关爱的；至于有耐心的，则是用 patient。好，那接着我们就来请 Jeff 老师帮我们做总结。You could say, if you are responsible, caring, and patient, then having a pet could be the best decision you've ever made. But you have to be all three of these things: responsible, caring, and patient too. All right, folks. With that, this part of our lesson is in the books. And when we come back, we'll be reading our piece of writing on getting a pet. <laughs> all right, everyone. Things to think about before. Getting a pet. We've got three paragraphs here. The first is going to open things up. It should get the reader interested. Okay. Here we're talking about pets, so we're going to explain the benefits of having pets. Why pets are great. Then we move on to the body of our piece of writing. The second paragraph. Okay, and we're going to tell you guys what you have to do or who you have to be to be a good pet owner. And then, last but not least. Third paragraph. We're going to be looking deep inside of our souls. So let's get started. Let's read from paragraph one first. Are you thinking about getting a pet? There are indeed many advantages to keeping a furry animal at home. They are a great source of companionship and lots of fun to play with. Some experts have even pointed out that petting your dog or cat. Can help relieve stress and lower your blood pressure, which is great for old folks like me. We're all stressed out, and we have high blood pressure. So, petting that dog can help you feel better. Okay, yes, to relieve stress is to make that stress go away. Whereas before you felt terrible and stressed out, now you feel relaxed and a whole lot better. That's what it means to relieve something. In this case, you take some. Something bad away, and you make someone feel better in the process. Now, that's not the only thing that we need to talk about in this paragraph. At the very beginning, we had this word advantages to talk about. Okay, when we're talking about advantages, we're talking about the good aspects or the good part of a situation. Okay, very often an advantage is not unlike an. Opportunity, but here we're talking about an advantage as being a benefit, something that is good for you. Then we've got the word furry. Furry means covered with fur, having a lot of fur. Now remember, humans, we've got hair on the top of our heads. Animals like dogs and cats have hair everywhere. They're covered in that hair, and that animal hair is called. Fur. Then, last but not least, companionship. Companionship is kind of like friendship, but your dog really isn't your friend. Okay. Usually, when we're talking about friends, we're talking about two human beings that have a close relationship with one another. They're not in love, but they like each other quite a lot. So here, your dog is your companion. So instead of having like a friendship with the dog, you'd say. That this dog is your companion, and that you have a sense of companionship with that dog. You guys hang out, you enjoy each other's company, you do stuff together. Your companions, okay? So these dogs, cats, these pets are indeed a great source of companionship. 好，我们来看第一段，先看两个单词。第一个单词是 advantage， 它表示好处、优势或者是有利条件，意思就跟 benefit 差不多。那它的相反词是在前面加上 dis， 变成 disadvantage， 表示不利条件或者是缺点。好，下一个单词 relieve， 它当动词，它表示减轻啊，或是缓解令人不愉快的事物或是情况。那它的过去分词 relieved 可以用来形容宽慰的，或是松了一口气啊，不再忧虑。的好，那顺便补充它的名词 relief，r e 
L I E F 这个名词，它表示宽慰、慰藉，或者是痛苦负担的缓和、减轻。再来看两个补充单字 ，companionship， 它是不可数名词，表示陪伴、友情。你把字尾的 s h i p 去掉之后，变成 companion， 就表示呃同伴啊、伙伴或是朋友等等。至于 fur 这个字 ，f u r， 它是指动物的皮毛，在后面加 r y 变成形容词，就是指毛茸茸的、有毛皮覆盖的。那同学们要记得，人的毛发用 hair， 动物的毛发是用 fur， 不要搞错喽。All right, paragraph number two. Let's take a look. However, keeping a dog or cat at home is a huge commitment. Pets require not only your love, but also lots of time and energy. In the case of a pet dog, you have to walk it multiple times a day. Puppies require even more effort, as they need to be housebroken. Cats may be less troublesome than dogs to take care of, but they love to scratch things and can destroy your furniture with their sharp claws. When your pet gets sick, be ready to bring it to the vet and take care of it. So we've got a lot to do in this paragraph. Let's go ahead and get started at the beginning. First of all, it says that keeping a dog or a cat is a huge commitment. A commitment is something that you have agreed to do. Okay, it's your obligation. Okay, you've committed to do that thing. It's your responsibility. It's something that you have to do and follow through on, and for which you are responsible. Very often, you have to put a lot of time and effort into your commitments. And even though these things are tough to do and might take a lot of time, you have agreed to do them. You have to do these things. You're devoted to these things. You're dedicated to these things. You have to do them. Then we also have the word multiple. This one's easy. If you walk a dog multiple times a day, you walk that dog many times a day. You have to walk that dog a lot. Then, what does it mean to be housebroken? An animal that is housebroken can live in a house. Okay, what do I mean? Well, anyone who's had a pet knows that when a puppy comes home, okay, that puppy kind of uses the bathroom wherever it wants. Okay, when you finally House break a dog. That puppy knows that that puppy can't poop or pee inside of a house. It has to go outside to do those things. That's what it means to be house broken. Then we have cats. Cats may be less troublesome. They might cause you less trouble than a dog might. Yeah, cats are independent, but they love to scratch things. So yes, troublesome. My fine, what a pain in the neck. Now, why are they troublesome? Because they scratch things. When you scratch something, you take something flat. Or sharp, and you rub it along the surface of something else. Like right now, I've got a mosquito bite on my arm. Boy, is it ever itchy! So I'm going to take my nails and I'm going to rub my fingernails on that mosquito bite, and hopefully that'll help take that itch away. That's what it means to scratch things. 好，再来看第二个段落呢。先来看 commitment。commitment 它表示承诺或者是保证、责任。那刚刚 Jeff 老师有提到 obligation 这个字 ，o b l i g a t i o n， 它具有义务的意思。好，那 commitment 还可以用来表达献身、投入。好，那我们其实可以用 make a commitment 来表达做出承诺，还有 keep one's commitment 来表达遵守承诺。下一个单字 multiple， 它是形容多个的，或者是有许多。部分组成的，它的意思其实就跟 many 差不多。那它的字首 multi 这部分就表示多的，像 multimedia 就是多媒体。好，再来看 troublesome 这个字。好， trouble 我们知道是麻烦，那后面加上 s o m e， 它变成了形容词，变成麻烦的或是令人烦恼的。再来看 scratch， scratch 这个动词呢，它表示抓或者是搔，像我们刚刚讲到抓痒就可以用这个字来表达。好，接下来看课文里面有一个形容词叫 house broken， house broken 它其实用来形容说宠物它有受过训练，不会在室内随便大小便，不会随便便溺。All right, let's wrap things up. Let's read paragraph number three. So before you head to your local animal shelter to adopt a pet, think carefully about whether you have what it takes to be a good pet owner. If you are responsible, caring, and patient, then having a pet could be the best decision you've ever made. 
All right, before we wrap things up, we've got two more words to talk about. The first of these is the verb adopt. Okay, when you adopt a child, you take that child in and you raise it as if it were your own. So it's not your child. You didn't give birth to it, okay? But you do take that child into your home and then raise it as if that kid is your kid. You love it, you care for it, so on and so forth. So if you adopt a pet, by the way, you go to the shelter and you take that pet in, okay? Very often when you do adopt a pet, that means you're going to a shelter. You're not going to a puppy farm or a pet store and buying a brand new puppy that's purebred and totally just delightfully beautiful and cute and stuff like that. When you adopt that animal, that animal might have already had an owner. And you know what? You're taking that pet in anyways because you want to love for it because you are a caring person. Yes, if you are a caring person, you're capable of caring about another person. You're capable of loving that person and giving that person warmth and devotion. And this also goes for pets because pets, they're not people, but they are definitely worthy of caring. 好，我们来看第三段有两个单词。第一个单词是 adopt， 它表示领养，不管是领养小孩或是领养毛小孩，你都是用这个字。好，那它的名词就是在后面加 i o m 变成 adoption。再看 caring， 它是形容有爱心的或是关心他人的。好，那这边还要提醒同学们，我们这个段落的第一句的后半段有一个部分是 whether you have what it takes to be a good pet owner。这句它是以 whether 引导名词子句来当受词。使用表达说是否具备当个好饲主的条件。好，那其中这边有一个 have what it takes to 加上原形动词，或是你也可以说 have got what it takes to 加上原形动词，这就表示拥有做某事所需要的能力呀、啊、特质或是条件。All right, folks, with that, this month's topic writing lesson is now complete, and it's time for us to say bye bye. bye.